All right, cool. So you'll remember in the previous chapter before we started, there was 8C, and we looked into what we call the nth term rule. So the nth term rule, if I was to give it a definition, I don't know if that gives it to you here, but in 8C, the nth term rule basically is able to give you any term you're looking for. So if a question asks you, give me the nth term rule for this and this, you need to give me the equation that tells you what the, the, the um, how to get any term you're looking for. Now, I don't think it explicitly taught it to you here. So what I might do is I might just really quickly go over how to create what we call the nth term rule, okay? Um, I don't know if there's any room in your pages because it's uh, it's quite full here, but maybe find some room somewhere um, in how to find the nth term rule. I might put it here. Okay, just somewhere in there. Because you do need to do this. I'm, I'm a bit uh, bummed that they didn't put it in the notes this year, but that's okay. Okay, so how to create, so just find a space in your notes, the nth term rule. Okay, so you need to be able to do this because I have seen it pop up before in multiple SACs. So we've, I've seen it in 2020 SAC, the 2021 SAC. Um, so it's appeared before. So how do you create the nth term rule? Now, generally what will happen is you're going to get a sequence of numbers. So let's just say my sequence of numbers is going to be uh, 3, 7, 11, uh, what's that, 15, 19. Okay, there's my sequence. Okay, we need to make the nth term rule for this. So remember the idea behind the nth term rule is it's able to give you any term that you want. So let's say I go to Jordan. All right, Jordan, what's the 20th number in this sequence? Okay, it's too hard, okay, because there's too many counting to do. That's why we use the nth term rule. Okay, so we need to figure out what that is. Now, remember the nth term rule looks like this. So it's, it's either Sn or it can be Tn. It doesn't really matter what it is. I think in the notation we've learned it's Sn. So it's Sn equals A plus N minus 1 times D. Now, when it comes to this nth term rule, there's only two things that you need to change in here, okay? And I'm gonna underline them for you. You're gonna tell me what is the first term and what's the common difference. That's all you have to change in the formula. Kind of like, do you guys remember y equals a plus bx? Yeah. Yeah, it's the same thing as that. So if I go back to that, in our y equals a plus bx, you know, there was only two things we're changing. Where is it, yeah. Equation, equation. Yeah, for, that, for this rule, if you remember back to data, there are only two things you have to change, the y-intercept and the gradient, okay? So in, in this topic, it's a similar concept, okay? You're only changing two things, the first term and the common difference, okay? So you just got to tell me what those are in the equation. So if you look at this uh, equation or this sequence, Fahad, can you tell me what is the first term here? Three. Three, okay? So that means A is going to be three, okay? Does anyone remember how to find the common difference? Uh, any number minus the previous number. Yeah, so it's any minor, any, any number minus the previous. So you go uh, any term minus the previous. And you can use any one of those. It's really up to you. But it's probably a good idea to test each one, but it's not necessary because uh, most of the time they should be consistent. But Rocco, give me any term from this sequence. Which one would you like to use? Seven. Seven. Okay, so the seven number seven is which term is that? T two or S two, and that means number three. Uh, three is the third uh, first term. So we're going to go T two, take away T one. So in that case, it's seven take away three, which equals four. So your common difference is four. Therefore, in my formula, all I'm changing again is what's my first term. Okay, and what's my common difference? So if I translate that all here, it's just going to look like this now. Sn equals 3 uh, plus n minus 1 multiplied by, oops, multiplied by 4. That's it. There's my nth term rule for that sequence. Okay, so you need to be able to do this because the nth term rule is able to give you any term that you're looking for. Okay, so just understand that. Right, let's move on to 8D now because the reason why I wanted to do that first is because there is a difference between 
the nth term rule and what you call a recurrence relation. There's a lot of big words, I understand that, but just understand the difference between both as we go through this. Okay, so the recurrence relation in 8D is a bit different to your nth term rule. So understand the difference between both. Nth term rule, remember, gives you any term that you want. So if I'm asking you what's the 50th term, 100th term, 20 millionth term, you use the nth term rule. But the recurrence relation, okay, where it differs is it's basically a rule that describes how to find the next term in a sequence. Or another way you could put it is it's a rule that tells you how to generate, you know, the, the numbers in a sequence. All right, there you Or how to generate a sequence. So it's basically, it's basically giving you the rule on how to give you the next few numbers. Okay, so the uh, nth term rule gives you any term, so it's different to the arithmetic sequence. Arithmetic sequence basically just tells you how to generate or find the next number. Okay, so here is the basic form of your recurrence relation right here. Oops. Okay, this gives you, okay, so you highlight this if you want to. This is what the common uh, uh, recurrence relation looks like. So in every recurrence relation, you're going to tell me what's the first term, okay? And then after that, you're going to tell me how do you get the next number, okay? All these numbers look a bit crazy, okay? But uh, I'll explain to you what it all means. The first one's really easy, T1 equals 8. That just tells you what's the first number, okay? So any recurrence relation has to have these. What is the first number? which is that. And then after that, you're going to tell me, how do you get the next number? Now, this symbol, TN plus 1, that just basically means the next number. Okay, that doesn't mean anything apart from that. When you see plus 1, the next number. Okay, and then here, TN plus D is basically saying the number you have now plus whatever the common difference is. Okay, so let's put that in example, or in this example here, so we can see what it's, uh, yeah, what we need to do. So in this arithmetic sequence, it is saying, it's giving us the recurrence relation of, all right, so if I highlight that here, T1 is my first number, okay? And then this, um, this part here of the recurrence relation is telling you how much you need to add to get the next number. So what is this telling you? Uh, let's see, Mia, what is this recurrence relation telling you? That the first number is? And how do you get the next number? Easy. That's all it tells you in the recurrence relation. So your first number is 11, and you're just adding 25 each time. Okay, so question A. Show by recursion that T3 equals 61. So this is saying, show with your working out that the third number is going to be 61. So this is how you need to do this in the sack. This is what we expect you to do. So firstly, write down, what is the first term right there? So T1 equals 11. Okay, so start off with that. And then after that, you're going to write T2 equals. Okay, so how do you get the second term? Well, based on the rule, okay, it's the current number you have plus 25. So what we're going to do is T1 plus 25 because it's the current term that we already know, which is number one. And you're just going to add 25 to it. So that means T2 should equal to uh, 11 plus 25. Therefore, the value of T2 is going to be uh, 36. Okay, so that's how we show a working out for it. And then you literally just repeat that. So that means T3 is going to be T2 plus 25. Okay, plus whatever the common difference is. So T3 should be 36 plus 25. Therefore, T3 is 61. So that's how we prove that the third number is going to be 61. Now, you might think, Torio, can't you just go like literally 11, 25, oh sorry, 36, then 61? You could do that. But in the sack, I would only give you one mark for it. Okay, you have to show working out must show working out. You can't just give me this. you got to show me how you got all the numbers. I know, I know, but that's, this is what they expect in your 11, uh, in year 12. Yes. 
we're usually in a set. Well, do we have to do C two plus T one and then plus six hundred? Okay, technically, so if you wanted to, you could you could go straight to that. You don't have to do what I did, but I'm only putting it so that you can see each step that I'm taking. Okay, so technically, if you wanted to, okay, and you want you were, you know, and I would still give you full marks for this. You could just remove this step, and you could remove that step. Okay, and that'll be fine for me. But you have to show working out. Okay, we're not just going to accept again, like I said, 11, 36, 61. Okay, you can't just do that. Have to show working out. All right, part B right here is find a value of n such as that tn equals 136. Now, this is where we used, if you remember last lesson, we used the solve function for this. Okay, and you can do it again here. So, in order to do this, okay. Remember the nth term rule, Sn equals A plus N minus 1 times D, okay? And we need to make the nth term rule for it, okay? Uh, or for this part, we need to make the nth term rule so we can put in our calculator. So according to this, you need to figure out what term number, so what is the N, or what is this N going to be if the value is 136? So in my formula, okay, it's going to be, 1, 3, 6 equals, first term according to this was 11, so 11 plus, and then n is what we're looking for, minus 1 times the common difference of 25. So literally all you do now is this bit here, okay, put it in your CAS. 12, right? Did you get 12? No, it's wait, common n, right? Comma n, yes, and then, oh, sorry, yes, thank you. Solving CAS, I'm going to write it down for you here to show you what it looks like in the CAS. So this will look like this now. Solve 1, 3, 6 equals 11 plus n minus 1 times 25, and then comma n, and put that in brackets. So once you do that on your CAS, okay, it should give you the number for n, or the value for which term gives you that so you look on the CAS you can literally just type in solve 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 one three six uh, equals eleven plus n minus one you can use any letter that you want when you use the solve function multiply by twenty five comma n close the bracket and it says it's the sixth number okay so that means it's the sixth term that has the number 136. Uh, we cannot put that here, equals. Okay, so the sixth term. Now remember, when you do these questions, it's probably a good idea to write your answer in a sentence form. So that means the sixth term has the value of, uh, what was it, 136. Okay, so just write in a quick sentence. Doesn't have to be fancy, just write it down like that. <clears throat> All right, let me fix this up because it's in the way. Okay, next one. Okay, actually, do we get it? Do you want me to do another example or that was easy enough? Okay, the next one is basically the same thing, but instead of a positive common difference, it's a negative common difference. Okay, just be mindful of it. So that means the terms are going to go down. Yeah. Now, I'm going to show you a quick way of maybe not having to use the solve function if you're really lazy, okay? On your calculator, okay, what you can do is, so you can follow me along if you want to try this. You could do that, but uh, you could also do it this way because then it shows you step by step which term or what uh, what term has that value. So let's say my first number is 136, all right? Press enter, okay? And then after that press, well, the common difference according to this is a positive 25. So you're gonna go plus 25. So if that's your first term, if you press enter, there's your second number, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, okay? And that basically gives you the term that has whatever term you're looking for. Actually, according to this, sorry, my bad, the first number is 61. So if the first number was 11, 
So you write 11, press enter, and then you press plus 25. If you keep pressing enter, it'll give you the next term. So this is term number two, three, four, five, and number six. Okay, so there you can see that, oh yeah, it's term number six that has a value of 136. So you can do it that way too. Fahad's way was another way, but you need to just be mindful of which term you're multiplying by. Okay, but I think this way is a little bit more maybe visually easy to see. Yeah, that's why you then use solve function. That might be easier. You can do it that way, but show, show the working out, please. It's really important. All right, we'll skip this one. We'll go to the next one. All right, so we need to write the recurrence relations for these. So um, most of the time, you need to be able to also write down what is the rule or the recurrence relation for finding any term, uh, for finding the uh, creating these arithmetic sequences. Now, remember the recurrence relation? Now, this is, this is only for arithmetic sequences. Your other sequences will look different, okay? But for arithmetic recurrence relation, please put this in there so you have it. Recurrence relation. Okay, this is what it looks like. So you have to tell me, and sometimes, okay, textbooks will use T1, sometimes they'll use S1. As long as it says the one next to it, that means it's the first number. So in this case, we'll just use T. So T1 equals A. A, you remember, means the first number. Okay, that's what that is. So A is the first number. I'll put that in red, actually. First number. So you have to tell me what is the first number, and then comma, TN plus 1. All this means is the next term is going to be the term you have now plus the common difference. Okay, so this is for an arithmetic uh, recurrence relation. So those are the two things you need to change in your re uh, recurrence relation. What is the first number and then what is the common difference? You got to show it. So for these sequences, okay, let's show what the recurrence relation is. Okay, for the first one, 101, 108, 115, 122, 129, 136, okay? I can already tell here that for the first one, the first term is going to be 101, okay? Easy. That's pretty straightforward. But now we need to figure out what is the common difference. Okay, so the common difference here, remember any term minus the one before it. So I can go, uh, let's go maybe T4. So this one minus T3. So T4, take away T3. Again, if you want to skip that working out, you can. You can literally just go straight to 1, 2, 2, take away 1, 1, 5. Therefore, the common difference is 7. Okay, and you can test that with all the other terms. It should be seven anyway. But now we've got all the information we need. So in my common, uh, my recurrence relation, put that in. So here's my recurrence relation. Okay, so you've got to write it out so it looks like this. Therefore, T1 equals 101, comma, Tn plus 1 equals Tn. And then depending on whether it's a positive or a negative, okay, in this case, it's a positive common difference, so it's going to be plus 7. So we'd write plus 7. Okay, and there's my recurrence relation. Okay, pretty straightforward. Not too crazy, I think. Let's do B really quickly. So for B, I can already see that my first term is 94. So first term, term number 1 is 90, oh, sorry, 94, or 91, my bad. So the common difference, any term minus the previous, let's go maybe, uh, what's that, T5 minus T4, so, oh no, T6 minus T4, no, T5 minus T4, sorry, I'm getting confused, 50, take away 61. So in this case, it's going to be negative 11. Thank you, Elena. So in my recurrence relation, is that you, Elena, or Tina, sorry? T1 equals, okay, first term is 94. Okay, and then Tn plus 1 equals Tn. Now, again, remember, is it positive? Is it negative? 
In this case, it's a negative recurrence relation, so it's minus 11. Oh, negative common difference, sorry. So again, just be mindful of what um, A is and what the D is. Sorry, that sounded weird, but what the common difference is. Okay, any questions? So just understand the difference. Recurrence relation looks like this. Okay, how do you get the next term? Uh, nth term rule looks like this. Okay, a bit crazy, but basically the nth term rule okay, tells you how to get any term that you're after. Okay, so that is the main difference between both. Cool. All right. Exercises for now. We're going to start on 8D. So checklist for 8D. We've got, oh, that's really easy. Just 1, 2, and 4. Okay, so we'll start on that.